Let's just get into the growth that you're witnessing across some of these emerging markets. We know it's been a more difficult journey for some of these countries around COVID-19, but what are you witnessing? Thanks for having me and good to be back. Actually, over the last 18 months, what we have experienced in all of our markets that today, 4G for all, all citizens is a priority. And I think the amazing penetration rates of 4G among the populations that we serve, which is about 10% of world's population in the nine markets that we operate in, has increased from 32% to 43%. And that's really the driving force behind our growth. And if you look to our results, like for like basis for the same nine countries that we operate in this year, it's 10%. And significant growth comes from increased penetration of 4G services in all the markets that we operate in. And I do expect that this 43% to move towards 70% over the next 24 months. And that makes me even more enthusiastic about the markets that we are in. Khan, we have seen lots of moving pieces in the industry through the developed markets so with uh, spin-offs and alliances because of the, the streaming wars that are playing out. When it comes to your markets, you're still engaged in uh, double multiplay uh, for some of the 4G customers. Do you think this is the path forward or do you think streaming has the potential to disrupt your market more? Look, I think there is a huge potential as customers move from 2G, 3G to 4G services of course, streaming, music or video parts be, be, becomes part of their life. And for an operator like us, it's really important that we increase our relevance to our customers from the basic 30 minutes of call time every day. And to do that, we need to move into services, streaming services, music, video, news, search engines, cloud services, to make sure that our offers are relevant to the daily digital lives of our customers. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. You will see us partnering sometimes, investing in others, but for us to serve our customers, not only 30 minutes, but 1,440 minutes of every single minute in a day is a must and part of our strategic objectives. Khan, really nice to see you today. Why is it over a five-year period, despite the extraordinary growth you're seeing in these emerging markets, and I take on board everything you're saying about the two-year plan to get those uh, participation rates higher, why is it your shares are roughly half what they were at their peak of five years? Of course, it's important to look for a like-for-like -like analysis, uh, Jeff. As you know, we had a bigger footprint in the past. But also it's important to understand that our company now embracing a growth strategy where we expect our customers to move in an accelerated way to the new generations of technology. As you know, we operate in some markets which are really compared to the benchmark groups com considered as emerging, including Bangladesh, Pakistan, where smartphone penetrations are really low compared to Western Europe and US. And as our customers embrace smartphones, embrace 4G technologies, and embrace financial services like mobile banking applications, mobile payment applications, streaming applications, and we see very clear examples of these from Tofi in Bangladesh to Jazz Cash in Pakistan, I think we will see that our revenue potential with 215 million customers will increase, and that's what we are experiencing today. Are you not concerned, though, that when you look at the, the, the huge developed world players, the likes of Vodafone's of this world, they've kind of gone ex-growth and the shares just, again, failing to rally significantly from their recent lows, get anywhere near their highs. So when you have got to these amazing levels that you're talking about, and I have no doubt that you'll, you'll get there at some stage, Khan, uh, but the problem is you become more utility-like in your valuation rather than a growth stock. Look, I think it's important when you look to the telecom sector, you realize the three important business models encircled with each other. On one side, you have an infrastructure business and we own 50,000 towers in nine countries that we operate in. And it's a beautiful business. It, is, it has its own type of investors, a staple fixed income type of business model. On the other extreme, you have the least banked populations around the world, from Bangladesh to Pakistan. And obviously, there's a hyper growth market in digital applications that could serve those customers who are hungry for mobile internet, who are hungry for entertainment, who are hungry for financial services. And in between these two, you have the beautiful retail telecom business. And I would like to make sure that this retail telecom business is also a growth business 
fueled by 4G penetration and digital operator-led applications and tariffs. And that's what we are focused on. And I think, you know, just averaging these three business models out doesn't make service to our industry. That's why we are focused on every three business models separately. And we will, you will see us actually executing on three fronts rather than only one front and make sure that while we grow our consumer brands, we also crystallize the value on infrastructure and monetize the value on the digital applications.